Today I'm going to show you how to replace an old outlet for a new USB one. I'm going to go step by step so you'll have the confidence to do it yourself, and you'll soon have such cool skills that everyone's going to want to sit by you at your next lunch break. To start, the first thing you need to do is make sure you're getting the right USB outlet. For example, if you want to change out the one by your sink, it may have these two buttons. You'll also find these outlets in your basement or your kitchen or anywhere within six feet of water. These are different than regular outlets because they will trip if there's a leaking current or ground fault, which can protect you from getting shocked. These are called GFCI or ground fault circuit interrupter outlets and are required by code. Because of code, you can't replace it with just any USB outlet. You have to get a GFCI specific one like this. They're a little more complex to install, so I'll show you how to do it in another video. Now there's one more thing I want to talk about before you go buy your new USB outlet. This is a regular 15 amp outlet, and ones with T's like this are 20 amp outlets. These 20 amp ones are more heavy duty and are made for things that draw a lot of power like a microwave or a furnace. These can only be used on 20 amp circuits, and I'll show you how to check that later. If you have to charge your phone while running a chainsaw, then you'll want to replace a 20 amp outlet like this with a similar 20 amp USB one. Most USB outlets like the one I'm installing are 15 amp outlets. 15 amp outlets can go on both 15 amp circuits and 20 amp circuits as long as there's two receptacles you can plug into. In summary, replace a GFCI with a USB GFCI outlet, don't lick the wires, and thirdly, you can use a 15 amp duplex outlet on a 20 amp circuit. With all that boring stuff out of the way, we're now ready to go install it. So let's go do it. First thing I'm gonna do is use a receptacle tester to check that all the wires are set up correctly. If I get two green lights, I shouldn't have any problems using the existing wires. Make sure to test both the top and bottom receptacles. You can also test it with one of these non-contact pens. When you check it, there should only be power coming from the smaller slot. The larger slot on the left is neutral, so you might test it and mistakenly think that there's no power. If you look at a plug, the larger side goes into the neutral slot, and the smaller side is hot and carries the electrical load to whatever you're trying to turn on. If you were to cut open a plug, you would see that the black wire connects directly to the smaller side, and the white neutral wire connects to the larger. So again, that's why only the smaller slot should have power. I tested both receptacles and everything's working correctly, so let's go down to the breaker box and kill the power. Your breaker box is gonna look like this, Open it up, and you'll see on all the breakers that there's tiny numbers. These numbers tell you how many amps are going to each circuit. So a 20 amp outlet will need to go on a 20 amp circuit, but you already know that. Next, I need to locate the room that I'm working in, then kill the power. Flipping that switch should have killed all the power running up to that room, so now we should be good to remove the old outlet. Before I start pulling on all the wires, I'm gonna go to an outlet in another room to make sure my tester's working correctly. It's working just fine, so now I'm gonna test both the top and bottom receptacles. There's no power running to this outlet, so now I'm good to take it apart. If you notice that there's pain around the outside edges of your outlet, you may need to grab a super extra fancy sharp knife like this one, then carefully cut through the paint. If there's a lot of paint around the faceplate and you don't cut it, it could rip the paint off the wall. After you take off the faceplate, you need to remove the two anchor screws on the outlet. Then grab the outlet from the top and bottom to pull it out. When you pull out the outlet, you'll see that there's three ways that the wires are connected. They'll be hooked around a screw, side clamped, or plugged into the back. I recommend to not ever use the backstabbing, instead use a shepherd hook or side clamps, which I'll show you how to do later. I have enough wire, so I'm just gonna cut the backstab sections, then I'll take off the hook. After I cut these off, I'm gonna look at the wire for any nicks or exposed metal, and luckily everything looks good. I also was wondering why one of these was hooked and the rest were backstabbed, so if you know of any reason why to do that, please comment below. I've removed all the wires, but there's still one more thing you'll need to check. On the side of the outlet are two metal tabs, which around these parts are known as jumpers. These jumpers make a bridge between these two screws. Almost always these jumpers are going to be intact, but on a very rare occasion they can purposely be broken off and will look like this. In the very rare occasion that this is broken off, you need to double check your wiring because potentially you could have two power sources going into one outlet. That's why you always test both the top and bottom receptacle. It's extremely rare that these jumpers will be broken, so the vast majority of you can just ignore this and continue on. However, if yours is broken, you need to stop and double check your wiring to make sure you don't have two incoming circuits. If you want to learn more, I'll have a video linked below. Alrighty, we've taken out the old one, so let's get moving. 
So there's two hot black wires, one is the line and brings in the power, and the other is the load and carries the power to the other outlets. The copper or green wires are ground, and the whites are neutral. If you have a red wire, that's going to be hot, and generally is going to be the load. If you want to learn which one is the line, you can turn back on the power, and only one of the black wires is going to be hot, and that's your line. The other will be dead, and that's going to be your load. You've got the wires figured out, but when you go install the new outlet, you may notice that it's built a lot differently. For example, both the brass and silver screws are on one side, and there's no plug-ins in the back. On the other side, it's completely smooth, and there's no place to put the wires. Also, the new USB outlet is much thicker than the old one. Well, trouble not your little heart, because hooking this up is even easier than an old outlet. If you flip it over, you can see that the hot black wires go with the brass screw, and the white neutral wires go with the silver one. In the middle section it says line, and that slot is for the wire that carries the power. Now you may notice that I just froze the frame, that's because I'm going to give you some bonus experience points. If you look at the top of the frame, you can see that there's two small rectangles. You can use these rectangles to tell you how long you need to strip your wires. There's two because there's different ways to wire up the outlet. You can do a shepherd hook around the screws, or use the side clamps, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a good pair of wire strippers and use the numbers on the side to match the size of my wire, which in my case is 14.2. You can also measure how long you need to strip the wires by marking it with your fingers. Make sure not to strip it too far that you have exposed metal behind the back of the outlet. When you strip the wire, don't wiggle it, but pull it straight out instead. Also, if you're using side clamps, never try to straighten out the hook, else it could weaken the wire and break off. Instead, just cut it off and strip the wire. Side clamps are so great because all you have to do is push in the wires, then screw it down very tightly. These are very secure, but it's extremely important that you do a pull test to make sure that the wires don't slip out. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about this green little screw. This is for the ground wire, and there's not much to it. Just make sure there's no twists or kinks in the hook, and that you're tightening it clockwise. Screwing down the right way will tighten the curvature of the hook. Lastly, I'm installing the hot black wires and repeating the same steps as I did with the neutral wires. Measure the length, strip the wire, then tighten it down. Just make sure to screw it down very tight, and then do a pull test. I have everything wired up, so now I need to push the outlet into the junction box. I find the best way to do this is make a slight bend in the wires, then use my palm to push it in. If it's extremely difficult to push in or won't go in all the way, you may need to get a larger junction box. And that's a pain, so I'm going to show you how to do it in another video. Now last thing before you seal it down, if you notice there's a large gap or any exposed wood between the junction box and the outlet, you'll need to use one of these extenders. I don't have that problem here, so I'm good to seal it up. Push it in, then use the screws to anchor it in place. Take a moment to make sure it's straight before you tighten it down all the way. Now we're good to finally put on the faceplate. With the faceplate on, we're good to turn on the power and make sure everything's working correctly. I plugged in a cable and it immediately started charging my phone, so now my friends we have a new working USB outlet. We just installed a USB-A outlet, but they also have USB-C outlets that deliver a lot more power. The good news is that these are installed nearly the exact same way, so you can follow the steps in this video to install them. The USB outlets and all other tools I used in this video will be linked below. If this was helpful, check out my home repair playlist, then go out and help someone else install their USB outlet. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.